Institute of Counselling, Skills of Counselling. Tape 3, Exploration Skills, Paraphrasing and Clarification. Right. Now, today we're going to begin with a definition of empathic understanding and then move on to look at the exploration skills of clarification and paraphrasing. OK. Remember the old trick from science lessons. Iron filings on a sheet of paper falling into a field of lines when you put them on top of a magnet. Empathic understanding is like this field effect. It's where we feel our way into the client's world. It's an in-depth awareness between counsellor and client. R.D. Lane, psychiatrist and author, called this effect co-presence. Now, feelings are the windows into the client's emotional world. It takes risk to reach out with your feelings, intuition and senses. Now, I'd like to give you another illustration of this, that of a wound which hasn't healed properly. It's hurting a lot, so it needs to be reopened and exposed to fresh air. And this is itself a painful process. Now the wound is explored, the client needs to understand what should be there and what shouldn't and what needs to be removed, and then the client takes appropriate action so it can heal properly. Exploration, understanding, action. So imagine with this wound, we and the client are at the stage of exploration. Now many inexperienced counsellors rely more on their knowledge than on their intuition, but we need not only to think, but to think and feel. At this stage of exploration, we must only process what the client has shared explicitly in the counselling session, not what we think is implied. If we do the latter, we run the very real risk of sharing our own unconfirmed insights. And this, again, requires intentionality and great discipline. It's all too easy to fall into the trap of sharing hunches and insights at too early a stage, the trap of assumptions. These tentative hunches and insights come later on, when the clients moved from exploring to understanding. So we can use reflection skills to reflect facts, feelings and emotionally charged communications made explicit by the client. We can use the exploration skill of paraphrasing. Now this is to restate in our own words what we've heard from the client. It illustrates what we're hearing and it also confirms to the client that we've understood what they've said. Paraphrasing can assist the client to fine-tune what they really think, so that they think, did I say that? Well, now I hear it put like that, I'm not so sure. You see? So, using Nazarene's car again. So, Nazarene, just to check that I've got this straight, you were looking for another car, and you saw a car advertised in the paper. It sounded good to you, and so despite the first call box not working, you made the effort to make the call from another phone box. However, an important word of warning here. We must avoid parroting. It comes across as insincere and it sounds fake or hollow to mechanically restate what the client has just said, just said, just said. <laughs> OK, why don't we take a few minutes for a cup of coffee? In some of our workshops, some people role-playing counsellors just seem to blurt out the words as if they couldn't care less. Others went too far, really, in the other direction treacly sweet and far too sympathetic. I've got to be myself as a counsellor and work at being warm and caring without being sympathetic. Not someone who clients think they can take for a ride, however. I suppose it's warm and caring, but feet firmly on the ground. Realistic. We can use the exploration skill of clarification. We clarify content and feelings and request feedback from the client whilst avoiding closed questions such as have you, will you, are you. These can be answered with yes or no and they push the counselling into a kind of interrogation. Nazarene, coming back to the example of the car and the assumptions which could easily be made. Nazarene, you told me that low mileage diesel cars are hard to find. Tell me what it was about the car that sounded quite good to you. It had done a high mileage, but it was a diesel and only two years old. Mm -hmm. Now, you seemed a little breathless when you arrived. Put me in the picture about that. 
I wasted a lot of time at the telephone box. I didn't want to be late for the first class, so I ran. Thanks, Nazreen. So, let's recap. Any exploration should be sensitive and tentative. Remember, it might be very painful for the client to explore themselves in this way. And as you can imagine, this takes great sensitivity on the part of the counsellor. Andy and Mary, it seems there was a lot of anger and frustration floating around towards the end of our last session. I'm wondering if this session we can agree to work through the anger and frustration rather than letting these strong feelings control the session. Can we agree that both of you have an equal amount of time and opportunity to express your views? And I would like any arguing to be kept out of the office if possible. OK. OK. Now, from all that you've said, would you say this is a work-based issue or a domestic issue? Well, I think it's more to do with our relationship. And I thought we were here because of your late coming. You know I'm late because of what happens before I get here. What I hear Mary say is the problem at work seems to stem from what happens before she gets to work. Then maybe we should go and see a good marriage counsellor then. I hear they're really good. Uh-huh. Well, Andy, if you both think that's the way to go, maybe we can explore that. This late coming, I take it we're not going to go on about my business again, are we? Your business? I thought it was our business. Yes, what I meant to say was our business. Andy, tell me what that's about. It's about me trying my best and nobody really cares. I am angry. Who cares if I live or die? I'm trying my best, but who cares about the little man, eh? All I need is one good break, a breather, and then I can make it. I hear you saying, I am trying my best. In fact, you said it twice. It's left me wondering now where Mary fits into this. I really don't know. Well, if you don't know, Andy, then we do need to see a marriage counsellor. Again, that is an option we can explore. No way. You're lucky I'm even here, and then you want me stumping round to see some other people. I want you to. I know what he's like. It's not going to work seeing another person. Besides, you're my counsellor. Anyway, I reckon you're Mary's best bet. I don't know about being anyone's best bet. However... As this counselling seems important to both of you, what I want to do is renegotiate your agenda with me for the next four sessions. Oh. What do you mean? I'll offer you both counselling specifically on your marriage relationship, in the hope that this will in some way shed light on why Mary has a problem with getting to work on time. What do you both think of my offer? This'll be good to watch. It's not about watching. It's about agreeing to work together. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? Okay. We'll give it a go. Yes. Yes, we will. Liz! Oh, no. Hello, David. Liz, it's just that I hope you didn't feel I was being unfair to you in checking up on Mary. I know people are our most valuable asset and all that, but at the end of the day, labour costs are labour costs, and we have to be sure we're getting value for the considerable investment we make in each of our workers. Pound of flesh would do, and it's much snappier, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the management team took the big picture into account when setting up the counselling facility at Waterside, and I respect their decision. Right. I know in the long run, happier people will add to the organisation. But I always get a bit twitchy when talking about intangibles, which are difficult to quantify. Maybe it's from my time in the States. The fact is, Liz, whatever it is, not just counselling, I feel much more relaxed when I can see the financial benefit there on paper, in black and white. I'm sure the cost of your service can be seen in black and white on your monthly invoice to Waterside. I've got to be getting along. Was there anything else, Dave? No, not really, except... Uh, Maybe we could go for a drink after work sometime next week. Dave, thanks, but no, I think I'll be busy. I've been wondering what Dave's hidden agenda has been for pursuing me about Mary. I think I know why now. Labour costs and value for money, I can't believe it. The most unromantic chat-up line in history. Oh, I expect that underneath his abrasive exterior, he's probably quite a nice guy. But I'll, uh, I'll have to watch him quite carefully. Liz, it's Anne, the administrator from the Institute of Counselling. Can you take the call? Thanks, Joe. Yes, I will. Hello? Morning, Liz. It's Anne here from the Institute. I'm seeing which of our voluntary counsellors has appointments free. I'm trying to please a lady. She's a nurse. She finished work last year. She's complaining of depression. 
How's your appointments diary looking? Uh, let me see. Well, I can see her in two weeks' time at the Institute on Saturday morning, between 11 and 12. Oh, that's super. Many thanks. Bye. Bye. Hmm. I wonder what type of depression that is. When I was at the summer school, I thought learning the skills to counsel were a bit like learning the skills to ride a bike. Now I'm finding that becoming an effective counsellor is more like travelling a road than reaching a destination. You can never stop learning or gaining in wisdom. And over the years I've found that the effective way to counsel is to get in touch with the situation not on an intellectual level, but on an emotional level. Gut feeling instead of analysis. person called Nazreen on the phone. Oh, right. I'll take it. Liz? Hello, Nazreen. A voice from the past. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. I'm working at, uh, as a teacher not a million miles from you, and, well, I wondered if we could get together sometime. In fact, I'd like to come and see you. For counselling, you mean? Are you, um, are you working in counselling? No. After that summer school, I decided to get into teaching. I felt more cut out for teaching than counselling. But right now, counselling is what I seem to need. I see. Well, when would be suitable for you? I work at Waterside Monday to Wednesday, so it would have to be a Thursday or Friday appointment? How about next Friday at six, after school? <laughs> Why is intentionality so important in counselling? How can the three-phase model help clients to maintain forward movement in the counselling process? Where does the balance lie between thinking and feeling in your current approach to counselling?